Hey everyone, it's Britt Max and welcome to some more Tesla stuff. We're going to do a real, realistic range test today. We've charged up to 100%, uh, it's quite cold and the battery's showing 325 miles on the monitoring system. So I'm using an opportunity, we are travelling up north, me, the wife and the child. We're going to be doing about uh, yeah, 90 miles up, mostly motorway, a couple of hops around and then 90 miles back. And we'll see how realistically this range is. It's quite a cold day and we've got some luggage on board. And there's been a big crash, so we're doing a lot of stop-stop traffic today. And later on in the trip, the motorway's closed and we have to sort of do a bit of a detour. So again, more stop-stop traffic. So we'll see how it goes. It's been a great opportunity to use the autopilot in this uh, slow-moving traffic, uh, which happily to report uh, works really well, um, especially as this is going on for quite a while. So first, uh, big leg down. Uh, we just arrived at 62%, which was what our original projection was, and that was with a bit of a detour. Uh, it was 203 miles in the BMS, so we started with 325, so minus 203. That's 122 miles lost from the battery monitoring system. And I compare that with actually done 96, so 26 miles has sort of been lost in the ether somewhere, uh, which probably with the, the cold and the driving conditions, uh, put it down to that. And pretty pointless, but the WLTP is 360 minus 96. So we're 51 miles down, and if we had the WLTP conditions. Uh, I'll explain more shortly why I think the WLTP range and looking at that is a bit pointless and not worth getting a headache over. Um, but here we are about to drive home. A few minutes ago, it would have let me drive all the way back home and given us 3% battery when we arrived. Uh, however, it's now saying we need to go via a supercharger. Um, I'd happily try and run it to zero, but with a, a tired wife and child in the car, for my sanity, we're going to go via the supercharger, we'll give it a go, and then I can still do the maths and work out what the total realistic range would have been for this entire trip, and for this, well, 100% battery charge. So I did six short trips after our big trip, uh, and you can see that the battery monitoring system lost 180 miles, we actually did 131, so totaling now on this trip, we've lost 48.3 miles, um, again, into the ether. So on the way back home now, uh, for this sort of 90 mile leg, you can see from the consumption there that the six trips I did in between have been very up and down on the consumption, but average about 275, and that's sort of been a theme for the whole trip, um, which I think is sort of realistic for this temperature and a few people on board, and then uh, going to be maintaining motorway speed soon, it'll probably be around the same. However, it is warmer today, and as we're going to a supercharger, the battery is preconditioning, so it's going to be at optimal temperature, and I think it's a little more downhill on this leg back, so I think that we'll actually, we should be able to get what the battery monitoring system is saying, I believe, so it should be quite accurate when we know the figures from the supercharger. So just a quick word on WLTP range and why I don't think you should get in a headache about it. So this car's rated at 360 miles. Uh, when I charged it up, it was showing like 325 miles. Had we driven at WLTP range conditions, which are optimal speed, optimal weight and op optimal temperature, then we probably would get 360 miles. And some days you might get more if you've got better conditions, but we're going to get less because we had a cold battery. And I think that 325 is just the battery monitoring system just guessing at what sort of range it thinks is in the battery. Um, so yeah, it's, no, it's not going to show you the 360, but it will show you 100% charge. So just don't worry about it. So before we charge, uh, we're showing projected 76 miles to empty and the battery monitoring system showing 103 to empty. Um, yeah, so we'll see how much the battery monitoring system loses on the way back and work that out from the 103 as to what the total range would have been for this trip. Uh, so one of the main reasons to get a Tesla is the supercharger network. That was a big thing for me. Uh, here you are, look, there's 12 stalls. There's only two of us here. Um, originally I thought that, you know, you're gonna get, these stalls are gonna be full all the time because there's so many Teslas around, but supercharging all the time is not really good for the car. So it tends to be, if you're just doing the odd long trip, uh, as I am doing today, and we're gonna stop for 15 minutes. We could have stopped for five, but I just thought I'd, I'd put a, quite a bit in. So really, they're not used that much. And when they are, they're not used for that long, as I think 90% of people charge at home. And seeing for now as the supercharger network is like superiorly vast to any other uh, public charging network, it's a huge bonus and a big consideration you should take if you're going to buy an EV or a Tesla. 
So that's supercharging done. Um, it was quite a pleasant experience. You just drive up, plug in, go and get a coffee, come back, it's done, and then get on your way. So we're getting back on the motorway now. And as predicted, I think the battery, because it's warm from the supercharge, we're holding a nice 70 and it's 13 degrees outside. Consumption is actually pretty low and the battery monitoring system almost indicates the same as a consumption. So I don't think we'll lose that many miles from the battery monitoring system versus actual on this leg back. Right, so at final destination, so on that leg, the battery monitoring system lost 11.8 miles. So the range of 102 left when I got to the supercharger, if we adjust that by 11.8, that gave a 90.2 real range. So before the supercharger, we had 159.2 plus the 90.2 adjusted. That means that the total realistic range of this whole trip is 249.4 miles. Against the WLTP, it's 110.6 lost. And against the 100% charge, uh, 325 minus the 249.4 gives us a loss from the original estimate of 325 of 75.6, which seems uh, quite a lot. But uh, this test was about realism uh, for an everyday sort of family doing a long trip. So there was many things working against us. So we had two adults, one child and luggage. We used the climate about 50% of the time. A uh, big one, we're motioning on the motorway at 70 miles an hour, which electric vehicles don't really like. It's always going to affect the range quite big. A lot of stop-stop traffic, more than an average trip. At uh, the cold temperature, I think this was a big one. I think it's affected by cold quite a lot. So day one, we're 6 degrees C. Day two, 12 degrees C. And then, yeah, it was two long legs, six, six short trips, and then a night stop. So we probably lost a percent over the night as well. But all in all, 250 miles with all that working against it, I think it's pretty good. So if you were not doing a long trip, if you were just going around town, I think you get a lot more miles. Um, I think 250 for me as a base is pretty good with all those variables. Perhaps some rain would have reduced it a bit more. Uh, I guess 200 might be an absolute base, but it's, uh, it's good to know that will be at the low end of the spectrum. And I reckon most of the trips will be quite a bit more. Hope you enjoyed this. Till next time, catch you later.